Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki with Elise Anderson. You're watching Community Matters today. Today we have, uh, what, two highly educated, highly opinionated <laughs> women who, have, uh, who are, have opinions on literally everything, but I think we're going to talk about the state of the country and the, the election and your political because the state you, of our state and of our country I know yeah. I know so what what's going on you, you you're smart tell me <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh putting me on the spot like that no so, but really uh, well let's let's take a hypo hypothetical by hypothetical so what if Donald Trump wins let's say that's a big what if that is a big what if. I don't think that's very likely. And I, and I don't know if we can even hypothesize after that because has he really given us anything concrete to go off no. of? No. And we've never had anybody like him in the White House, so I don't even know how he would treat the White House and treat the office of president. What he would do be a White whole House new, staff, even. like, brave new world, right? <laughs> that has such people in it. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> what about, what if, okay, so if what, what I want to know is what's going to happen, how, What's going to happen with the GOP after the election? I mean, I think Donald Trump has done a lot of damage to the GOP. Oh, un unspeakably so. I mean, he, it could be argued that he's completely undermined the GOP. Right. And, you know, at the convention, or was it, yeah, it was at the convention, they tried to pass that vote, and they had a substantial number of people to, um, to revoke Donald Trump's candidacy mm -hmm. or to challenge it, mm -hmm. to challenge the way that the mm -hmm. elections had run. And... The Rules Committee just completely overrode that vote, even though they had hundreds of supporters. I'm sure they regret that now. <laughs> yeah. Because he's, cause he's you know, taking he's apart imploding. people. I saw Mike Pence refuse to um, endorse uh, Ryan. Uh, I was yeah, that's utterly shocked. And Ryan didn't unendorse Trump. He just said he was going to put his, right. his allegiance elsewhere, right. and his, not his allegiance, right. his, his right. efforts. Right. We're talking about Paul so Ryan, Speaker even, of the House. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He didn't even say anything against Trump, really. He just kind of stepped back from it a little bit. You and know, that you, well, unleashed. I would say you're a Republican. Well, would you say you're a Republican? Um, oh, I am registered as a Republican. <laughs> I, I, re I, I only registered this year as a Republican so I could vote for John Kasich in the primary. Oh, which okay. didn't come to much. Um, well, no. <laughs> it's amazing. The people that he beat is just amazing. Um, but, you know, you're my idea of a Republican, you know, fiscally conservative, socially neutral. You think there's a party for people like you? I mean, is there going to be a party for people like you again? There I mean, I, remember I, I, I like the Libertarian Party. It's just realistically, the candidates that it's field haven't been that it's fielded haven't been stellar. No, um, not at all. I mean, Gary Johnson. I was. I even have a Gary Johnson bumper sticker on my shelf, except I haven't put it on my car yet because some of his gaffes have been pretty embarrassing. Yeah, he's pretty disappointing. William Weld, on the other hand, I thought I think the ticket should be switched. William Weld was a really good governor, and he's really more like the uh, kind of Republican that I remember. Which, I, as I said, it, it's not um, they're not so involved in social issues like you know religion or even guns or yeah. or. Um, uh, Abortion, these, they were sort of morally neutral. They were more, it was more about a fiscal policy, a fiscal approach to the United States, and a, a kind of state approach than it, than it was, um, you know, evangelistic or, you know, so. Yeah, and that's what I think the Libertarian Party's going for: are the dis, disenchanted Republicans who just, you know, can't can't vouch for the direction that some of the, you know, the social right. issues have taken. And personally, I'd say I'm not just neutral on social issues. I'm pretty liberal on them. Oh, well, okay. So. I mean, I didn't know. So, yeah, th but that's what, you know, like, that's what uh, the typical, I just, your kind of Republican is so rare in the media. And there may, I, there may well, be see, many in, in the... They're, they're rare in the media that gets out. I, I have some friends who have... Um, who have tried to express views that are, you know, a little bit critical about Trump, and they've been suppressed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? And I don't want to go into details no, on that, but no. but the media is very selective as to what it portrays as a Republican. And I'm sure, you know, there's all this all this criticism about the Democrat media coming from Donald Trump's supporters, saying right. how unfair right. it's been towards them, but they need to look in the mirror. Right. Well, you know, I, I, it's true that the only kind of Republican that's depicted in the media, which is largely liberal, and I'm a liberal, and I can say that because I'm one of them. They're one of me. I know these people. Um, 
uh, is these very, very ultra right wing, very radical, uh, you know. Like what Tom Hanks played on the Saturday Night Live clip. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So, you know, I think there's definitely room for a more, what I think of as standard Republican Party. Certainly Donald Trump isn't. He's not. So, he, he's been a Democrat for most of his political career. I, know. I, I tell you, Hillary's more like a Republican than, than Trump, yeah. I swear to God. I swear she is. She's and it's you know, amazing, neutral. Yeah, and it's amazing that so few Republicans will admit that. You know, and, it, and her record attests to it, even, even some of her campaign strategies against uh, Bernie Sanders. I wonder why that is. is it, because I don't think, I, I don't know, the party, I guess... The party just wants somebody Republican in office, or I mean, I don't. Yeah. It just it, com it just well, com someone, practically. The party wants to have its name on the office, even if its principles aren't. I suppose. Right. Right. And That's I guess it just attests to the power of groupthink, you know, and of a mob mentality, and how that can take over people, and how people want to be on a team so badly that they'll abandon their principles. Right. For it. Totally. Totally. Because you know, as far as I can see, Mike Pence and Donald Trump are miles, like eons apart. Right. I mean. So th yeah, Mike Pence is kind of your very streamlined Republican. Yeah, He's right, been exactly. A Republican ne forever Neo, and yeah, post Ronald Reagan Republican, re you know, religious guy, conservative guy. Um, so it, it's yeah, it's just uh, I, I just I, I, every day I wake up and I have I feel dis dislocated because I don't know what's going on. The world seems turned upside down, and you know, uh, Hillary Clinton. I'm a Democrat and I'm a liberal, and. I'm not crazy about Hillary Clinton. I think Hillary Clinton stole the, the no nomination. I do. I really think. I think the DNC yeah. um, rigged the, the Democratic nomination. So yeah. it, 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 it's just like I'm living in a different world, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see the turnouts, respectively, in Hawaii, because Hawaii voted so overwhelmingly for Bernie Sanders. Right. And Will they go to the Libertarian choice? Will they go to the Green Party choice? I think... They might have until the last month and all the <laughs> the gaffes of Gary Johnson. I do right. know some people who are supporting Jill Stein, but right. Right. not that many. Yeah, that's uh, that's where I think you know I can see. Um, uh, I mean, at residents of Hawaii being more aligned with Jill Stein. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I tell you, it's one. It's funny about Hawaii because I came from like a real liberal bubble. Uh, Manhattan and New York City, and this is a real liberal bubble too. I was thinking as I was oh, yeah. walking over here how happy I was to have you because, <laughs> you know, uh, otherwise there's, everybody just spouts the same stuff. There's nobody's a critical, a unique critical thinker. Everybody's just on the same. Oh yeah, team. I um, was looking at Facebook yesterday, and one of the politicians, a very popular local politician, wrote um, that he had just voted, and so he had a stream of, you know, a hundred or so commenters saying, yeah, I voted for you, and then a good couple, a good dozen of them probably said blue across the ticket, blue in, you know, bold capital mm -hmm. letters. And that's, that's not responsible, to not do any research on the candidates and just to vote one party across the ticket, because in some races, the typical roles are switched. Like, for instance, um, it's, it's no secret that I've, I work for a Republican, the only Republican in the state Senate, and um, he's very strong on environmental issues. Well, Republicans have a bad reputation on environmental right. issues, right. and his opponent actually voted for Ho the Ho'opili development on the west side, which is, I believe, a nearly 2,000-acre project right. to, to develop prime agricultural land. And so the Democrat opponent supported that, and um, Senator Sloan, my, my boss, opposed that. And so I kind of cringe to think at how many voters who support environmental issues will be voting for the anti-environmental yeah, candidate just because, just because, because of they the think. letter after And me. actually, you know, Richard Nixon is the, uh, the president that um, created the EPA. So there is a little bit of history yeah. there with Republicans uh, uh, and the environment. So, y yeah, you have, to, you have to take each person as an individual and look at, do an analysis of their positions and because there you some some democrats are for, you know just just more like republicans and it, it you really can't i don't think voting by ticket is a good idea yeah it, absolutely it, 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 it encourages groups like, you know <coughs> mm -hmm. so and in Hawaii, you know, where our labor unions are so, so strong, strong and powerful, I, I'm afraid that that's going to be happening more than in most places because, you know, the labor union gives you a ticket that has each choice filled out, generally each Democrat choice. Does it really? And 
Really? Yeah. yeah, often. We were surprised to see that Sender Sloan got endorsed by the Star Advertiser last week, which was a big, big statement because, you know, it's usually a fairly liberal newspaper, a very liberal newspaper. But he must be an excellent, uh, <laughs> you know, representative. He's yeah. a representative, right? A yeah, senator. senator. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's an exceptional senator, and he's also really, even though... He's not as combative as some of the Republicans in the state house because obviously there are no other Republicans in the state Senate. He um, holds more true to the conservative platform in general. And, you know, I, right. I disagree with some of his platforms, especially on the social issues. But right. um, he, he, you know what, you know what you're getting. And anyone has to respect that, especially when you get it with the kind of transparency that you do. Right, right. So, you know, I, I just hope that this stained Republican ticket doesn't cost him the election because it's good because that oh, would I cost hope the not, whole of I, I, Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I hope not. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and talk about uh, how historical this uh, election really <laughs> is. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m., where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in, and aloha, and thanks for watching. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Hi, you're watching Community Matters, and I'm here with Louise Anderson. We're talking about this very historic election uh, that's coming up on Tuesday. And, you know, I was wondering, you know, you're a different generation than I am, and uh, I have profound um, feelings about the first uh, woman uh, president, even though it probably wouldn't be my first choice as the first woman president. Does, is your generation like equally excited or do they just think this is the way so. thing? No, they, it's normal for you, right? Yeah, no, I don't think so because my generation largely played on co-ed soccer teams mm -hmm. growing up. I mm -hmm. didn't play soccer, I played tennis, but mm -hmm. my childhood teams were co-ed in tennis. Um, we, you know, had gym with the boys and the girls together. Our schools are co-ed and I think we just kind of take it for granted and um, frankly, I noticed more times growing up that the w girls and boys would be separated than when they were together. Right. And right. I, I always, I didn't like being kind of considered apart from the boys. I was personally a very good student in math since I was about eight or so. And um, I kind of resented it when people said, oh, wow, you're doing better than the boys and you're a girl. Right, I you know. know? That's, a, that's a stereotype. It's terrible. Because I was also, I was equally good in math and English. And I, I was encouraged in English, but not so much in math. Like, it, yeah. it was like it was an anomaly or something. Yeah, you absolutely. Know what I mean? So, oh, well, that's great to hear. Because, you know, I still remember, I mean, so much discrimination and so much. I'll give you an example. I always give this example because nobody ever believes it. I once worked in an office where there was a birthday party, and the gift to the boss in the office was a stripper that came into the office when was and this? stripped. <laughs> yeah, this was like 1979. During work hours. During work hours, during lunch hours. Wow. Pe right. Pe so people like, uh, you know, uh, there's a whole generation, two generations probably, that... Um, you know, they would be horrified. I, mean, I was horrified. You know, I was horrified, and you know, I said, you know, I really feel uncomfortable with this naked lady in yeah. the office. And somebody said to me, I'll never forget it. Oh, Marianne, you have no sense of humor. That's what they said to I, me. How many other women were in the room? There was that. Oh, another woman said that to me. There was. Yes. She was the only other woman. Yes. There. Right. Right. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I I have a friend from college who did a a senior thesis project on women's critiques of other women women's critiques of other women compared to men's critiques of women and the women were universally harsher on each other than the men were on right. them. Right. So it's interesting because she wanted so much to be part of that club that she kind of turned to you to be the outsider to prove that she was part right, of the club. Right, right. And you know, to be honest with you, happily, I've seen a change in that. When, when I was younger, 
uh, women executives and powerful women did really identify with the men and weren't so nice to the junior um, women coming up. But now I see there's like much more solidarity, much more strength. Well, there's just many more yeah. women in the workplace. So, yeah. you know. But I, I, I'm, I'm delighted that it's not, to me, it's like, wow, what, uh, uh, you know, I can still remember, you know, uh, when women couldn't, you know, get credit and stuff like that. So it seems very historical. But the fact that the, the younger generation, it is oblivious. You're not, not an oblivious, but it's, it's a meaningless, uh, you know, distinction. Is makes me ha I so feel, happy. I feel like there's a significant change even since 2008 when Hillary Clinton was running against Barack I Obama. So. That we heard, oh, the first woman president all the time, and now that's kind of in the back. And maybe maybe it's because of the tilt that Donald Trump. I put think on so. He's race. put a whole. But she is a nasty woman. She's not a nasty person. So he's trying to make it about that to some degree. Right. Right. That was <laughs> that was. Probably Probably one of his, um, in my view, biggest biggest gaffes because um, he could have said my opponent is nasty. He could have said it's what? one nasty woman. Yeah, right. <laughs> that that really brought it, you know, down to a level that you know, it, it, you know, it, it, a level that's become kind of typical. Frankly, it, it's shocking. Like the things he says about people, like, just out of polite, a polite. Not that Hillary Clinton's like so honest or so great, I think, but just in polite conversation. Decency. Yeah, it's none. <laughs> I, 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 it's appalling, you know. I mean, even I, I know most Republicans, at least most, should oppose to how he was harassing, you know, our war hero from the last election, right. John McCain, and right. he and that, or from a couple elections ago. But that was inex that was unexcusable. It I was mean, unbelievable that you that you're a prisoner of war, and there so therefore you're not a hero. I mean, he's he's lashing out everywhere, and the, the racial stuff, the Mexican stuff. It's it's I ridiculous. I know, and but you know, he is representing, and I think you and I are very lucky because we're not really. Uh, in contact, no, not that we're very lucky, but we're not in contact. But he's tapping into this group of uh, uh, working class or lower middle class white people. I wouldn't even say just men now. I'd say yeah. men and women. Well, I have a good friend who I just had lunch with a couple days ago who's a professor at an elite Ivy League college. And you know nowadays they're, they have this safe space nonsense going right, on. And right. I'm going to be frank. It's oh, nonsense. Oh, please. I, I, I mean, I'll tell you a story you after you. It's, yeah, you can't dress no. up as an Indian anymore nope, for Halloween. Nope, it's nope. absurd. Nope, and, I know. and so, and my friend is actually a minority on several different levels. He's an Asian American, and he's homosexual, and and so you know you'd think that someone who can fit those demographics would be le less critical about safe spaces. But he, no, it's censorship. Yeah. I mean, if it's you ridiculous. like censorship, and then you like safe spaces. Yeah, yeah, the safe space, it, and I really think it's discrediting the college institution in general. I think so because it's not a laboratory of ideas anymore. Because you can't really express no, you your can't, ideas. you can't, and there's and freedom of speech is crumbling right. away in the environment where it right. should matter the most. Right. But what Donald Trump's offering is a backlash against that. And exactly. He, he phrased it, my friend phrased it so nicely. It's a safe space for white men. A Donald Trump well, rally is a safe space for white that's men. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. They can they can uh, just, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you, you and I have been lucky because based on merit, we've achieved, you know, what you're supposed to achieve, you know, a, 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 a Ivy League education and a certain status and so on. And, um, but if you don't have that, um, uh, mind, if you don't have that kind of mind and labor is the only thing you have to offer, you're cut out, you're really cut out in, in this country. And by 40, I was reading this article that said that, you know, people by 40 sometimes are laid off at wh white working class people never to get a job again because they just recycle in newer yeah. and younger people. So, I mean, somebody has to do something, a jobs program or something to help these people because they're suffering. Do you think, though, that it's a objective matter, a financial matter, that they don't have enough money, or is it a respect issue? Because I know, I know, I That's know... That's a good question. Because I know some Donald Trump supporters who have been on both sides of the economic spectrum who um, feel disenfranchised even though they have plenty of means to... Right. To well, I think that. largely it's um, an economic question, but I understand the people... Listen, I'm a member of the Northeastern elite and they make my skin crawl. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, 
that. That's where I come from. That's where I went to school. And I understand. They, they seem like such a closed, like snobby club. So I would understand why somebody with differing political views, irrespective of economic class, would, would, would say, I don't want these guys in control. I, yeah. don't, I want something a little more fundamentally... I don't know, I was going to say American, but that's not right. Uh, it's hard to define that word these days. Yeah, right. Well, it's interesting that I've heard that among college graduates, um, Hillary Clinton's outdoing Donald Trump by about three to one. And un for college, for those without college educations, and this is within Caucasians on both sides, Donald Trump has a lead. I forget what the, what the percentage is, but... Yeah. I think they're low information it's like voters. At least 10 Donald Trump ahead voters. Of her. I think they, for the most part, and that's not to say there aren't, uh, ed, you know, uh, educated, you know, wealthy people voting for Donald Trump. But I think for the most part, they're low, low information. They get all of their uh, information from, uh, you know, they don't read particularly, and they maybe the new from from news, maybe Fox News. Although you might <laughs> like Fox News, I, I'm I not know. a fan of Fox. <laughs> okay, um, and. Uh, not, but I don't even think they get their information from Fox News. I don't think they watch news at all. I think they get their information from, like, reality TV. You well, know what I mean? That's where Donald Trump's history is. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but so, but yeah. honestly, I don't think it's a question of stupid people versus smart people. I think this is an emotional race on both sides. That who do you identify with? And almost their mannerisms and their, their inflections. Oh, everything, everything. I think that's more important in this race even than the bare facts. Everything. But, you know, I don't are. want, like, I don't want somebody like Donald Trump to represent this country, somebody with mannerisms like that and like the vulgarity that like yeah. we're talking about. But on the other hand, I do not want a super elite Washington you in Beltway inside. Yeah, I want somebody who understands the plight of of uh, people that haven't been t completely fortunate in the system and who who need uh, needs need help or something. They need something. I don't. You know. I don't know. But how could someone in that position work their way up to becoming a major candidate for president? That's yeah, that, those days are gone. I think, which is unfortunate, really, because. Um, you know, you know, Nixon was was worked his way up to be. He was the last president that I can remember that actually was born in modest mm. circumstances, or maybe Bill Clinton, I guess, also. But I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it anymore. Like, you know, be like Abe Lincoln, be born in a log cabin, and 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 yeah. become president. I think you need to be a part of like, a, uh, you know, a moneyed, a certain moneyed elite, you know, because it's too expensive. There realistically is a glass ceiling, and I mean, it's it's possible, but nowadays you have to be part of one of two of two or three families right I think <laughs> Bernie Sanders came pretty uh, close yeah, but I mean, the system was rigged against him it was totally rigged I to it was totally rigged against him like I I you know my husband he, he you know says these things to irritate me but he's like oh you know Hillary Clinton didn't really have to run she just called in a few favors and then she was going to be the nominee you knew that right going in you didn't. And, and it sort of seems like that you know and it's and when she when she gets in the white house she's going to be investigated by the FBI whoever heard of such a thing yeah what's going to happen then i hope tim kane's prepared <laughs> yeah but i'm not a big such a big fan of his either so but yeah. but yeah i hope tim kane's prepared because he has a very good chance of being the next president of the united states i mean because i think the f the fbi actually ha ha it, it's not a trumped up thing they're doing it's to use a word i, I think they actually have legitimate reason for investigation you know, I don't mm -hmm. think they're doing it just as a political action. Like a lot of liberals think, oh, it's just they're just doing it because for politics. But I, I don't believe that. I don't. What I do don't you think about the timing of this recent release of emails? I think that's interesting. I think Comey. There's one of two things. Either Comey is like the most upstanding guy of integrity who could not let this go on without exposing it. That's one vision of Comey I have. And another vision of Comey is somebody who is in uh, cahoots or, or um, with with re the the elite of the Republican Party to undermine the election in in whatever way he can. I lean toward integrity, but just because you have integrity or you think what you're doing is right doesn't mean it's right, right? Yeah. That, yeah. But I have a feeling that he was genuine in his yeah. desire to be. Well, whether or not it's right or not, if you, if your intentions are in a right in a meritorious direction, yeah. then I don't think I don't think he was put up to, like, you know, I don't think, I don't think that was really necessarily a political move. I think it was 
a not well thought out move maybe, but I, don't, but I think that he felt that it was something that he had to do because he certainly put himself under the microscope, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no reason for him to do that really, you know? Yeah. So, you know, and I heard a funny joke about the Clintons. This, I think this is such a funny joke. So my, my boss is, 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 is a Republican. We talk all the time. And he's always talking about how the Republicans- Is he a Trump supporter? Uh, no. Oh, is he a Clinton very close. supporter? I'm not sure. He, <laughs> but well, in Hawaii, it hardly matters because of how the electoral right, but, college but works. Still, but still, so he always says the the Clintons are like the mafia. You know, they have <laughs> fingers and everything. They're like a big criminal conspiracy. He used to be a prosecutor. <laughs> so I said, you know, if the Clintons really had power, Anthony Weiner would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have gotten rid yeah. of him a long time ago. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that politically, I just, no, but... I know, it's a, just a funny joke. I, I'm only saying yeah, it jokingly. No. But I mean, really, uh, he's been such a thorn in their side, and now with the uh, emails, it's just, what a mess. And how ironic that it was on his computer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, it's icky. It's, it, this is a very icky election, I would say. That's, that's my uh, political commentary for this election. So, <laughs> you know... Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, but you, I, I assume you're voting for, for Clinton, right? You seem, or not? I you don't am, have to say. I, you, I mean, <laughs> I, you don't, you're not obligated to say. Um, should I say, should I say? Yes, for various reasons I'm voting for right, Clinton. Right, because she's a Republican. So she, she'll do, <laughs> well, she'll that's, do right that's by not you. The, that's not the reason why I'm voting for Clinton. but <laughs> And I am too, and probably for the wrong reasons. She, Lisa's probably voting for the right reasons, and I'm probably voting for I, the wrong I, I believe in my reason, and some people know what that reason is. But. Okay. <laughs> and we thank you for joining us today uh, at uh, Community Matters. We're Lisa Anderson and Marion Sasaki. Wishing you a good weekend. And vote. Vote, yes. Vote. I might do that today, actually. I